Getco Mining special coverage of the Bank of Montreal's 32nd Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference is brought to you by First Majestic Silver. Patriot Battery Metals has been a darling of the resource base. The company did a 52 week high of just over $13. I'm with CEO Blair Way. Blair, welcome to Kiko. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, congratulations. You are a nominee of uh, Mining CEO of the Year here at Kiko. That's great. Appreciate that. Uh, talking about uh, that uh, good run that you had, maybe you could highlight what has been uh, some of the key milestones that have kind of taken the company this far. Absolutely. The last 12 months have been an exciting time for the company. We've taken it basically from a very junior explorer with the market cap less than 10 million, raised some money, did the drilling, was able to advance the project to where we not only consolidated our property to 100% ownership of a 50 kilometer trend, but we started drilling and field work in that trend. We have still only really touched 25% of the trend. We've only really drilled in three and a half kilometers of that trend. So still a lot ahead of us, a lot of drilling, like thousands of meters yet to go. But what we've been able to define this year is really quite spectacular and it, it is certainly shaping up to be something incredible. Uh, describe the region where you're in. So we're in Northern Quebec, James Bay region. We're about 300 kilometers east of the James Bay, but we're 15 kilometers south of the trans tiaga Highway and the uh, Quebec Hydro Line. So we're an excellent infrastructure located in a very favorable jurisdiction for mining. Uh, what's the plan right now? So still a lot of drilling right now? Absolutely, we, we have to continue to drill. We're aiming for a, a, a maiden resource on our CV5 corridor area, which is started out at around 2.2 kilometers defined by last year's drilling. It's already expanded to 2.6. We're continuing to drill that out to just see how far it may continue to the west. At some point later this winter, we'll define the line in the sand That'll be the cutoff for our maiden resource, which will be targeted for June. We'll also be deploying some of our rigs this winter to CV13, and we'll put a resource out on CV13, which is another area. It's a cluster which we've drilled and has been very promising for, again, quite significant tonnage. We'll prepare that again with more drilling and aiming for later in the year for a resource on that. Now you added a heavyweight in the lithium space uh, to your board. <laughs> Who's Ken Brinson and uh, what does he bring? Absolutely. Ken is very well known in Australian circles. He's been the uh, managing director of Pilbara Minerals, and they've had an amazing run going from back when Ken joined. It was, I think, a 200 million market cap with just an exploration target or certainly a, a mineral resource. And that's grown to a $15 billion market cap company. Ken, fortunately for us, retired last year. And again, fortunately for us, liked what he saw in the Patriot uh, asset and also the team that we put together and, and has joined us. And, and he brings a wealth of knowledge, not only in the whole development cycle, what we have to do, but just in the whole lithium space. So it's an it's a amazing addition to the team. Um, what's your funding situation? How are you doing this? Very strong. We are, we're favorable being in Quebec and Canada. We can do the flow through financing for all of our drilling and exploration work. So we recently raised $20 million in September, which was for the 2023 drill program. We recently dual listed on the ASX and did a, a basically a, a placement in on the ASX to establish our distribution in Australia. That was another 4.6 million. Plus, we have close to 20 million in warrants that are well in the money at 25 cents and 75 cents. That funding continues to come through, so we're well funded for our winter drill program and into our summer. It's too early to talk about offtakes or JVs right now. Absolutely. We need to demonstrate the scale or properly define the scale of what we have here. There certainly are interested parties and we're welcoming them to come and see what we have. But at this stage, we ask them to let us continue to build the value in the ground. And there may well be a point in the future that there will be some partnerships. There's interest both at or at multiple levels, OEM, chemical companies, lithium companies. But we really have to keep doing the work. We can fund the work that we need to do now well into even doing what we're aiming with a pre-feasibility level work all the way to even feasibility and, and, and the actual permitting process. Um, but somewhere along the line, there may well be a strategic partner that would like to come on board and help us, help us on our journey. I'd like to step back a bit, uh, Blair, beyond what you're focused on uh, at uh, Patriot. Um, can you assess uh, the potential for Canada for its lithium endowment or what's there? 
Well, even bigger, North America. North yeah. America has a has a significant problem. There's a shortage of supply. If, if you want to have a North American supply chain, you need to have the battery factories. You need to have the anode and cathode factories. You need to have the chemical plants and the raw material feed. And sadly, North America is a little bit behind the eight ball on that. China is probably five or six years ahead. They built the capacity. They too have a problem that they are even struggling to find capacity. But fortunately, Western Australia is, is fulfilling that. But as North America ramps up with uh, lithium hydroxide, uh, foil plants and battery plants, the feed is desperately needed. And Europe is in a very similar problem without any clearly defined feed at this time. So we think we're well positioned, but the market is growing. The demand curve for lithium is, is a, actually quite amazing when you look at the, the growth of the industry as far as the, the green transportation revolution. Um, we're seeing an incredible demand coming down the pipeline and we think we can be a solution to it, but there could be three more Patriots identified in North America and that still wouldn't be enough. Uh, Blair, uh, you're based in Brisbane Correct. Uh, and uh, we're at uh, the BMO show and it's been uh, rebranded to, uh, I, I don't let me say <laughs> the whole name, but uh, they added critical metals to the end of it. It seems like we've seen a little bit of an uptake or I should say a strong uptake in the critical metal space Absolutely. here in North America, but only the last couple of months. I would say that uh, Australia seems to have been ahead of the game as far as critical metals. We saw the uh, duke out between Wailu and uh, BHP, I believe it was, uh, for uh, the Norant uh, asset there. Um, is North America catching up right now? I think they're catching up, but Australia is advanced. I mean, we, we all went through that first sort of couple of cycles of lithium bubbles and the bubbles sort of burst and there is some pain. And it was felt in Australia as well, but they were maybe a little better place to be able to, they were maybe a little further ahead, were able to just produce a, a spodumene concentrate and sell it to China. In North America, we were probably a little more trapped in feeling we had to fulfill more of the supply chain to feed a battery manufacturer here. That created some real technical challenges that then fed into the next downturn from the lithium bubble, and that created a lot more pain here. But what we're seeing now is a lot more exploration. Um, as I said, there's, there's no competition in North America right now. Anyone that can find a decent size hard rock lithium deposit and can find a path to production is not competition. It's just contributing to the incredible demand that's going to be in North America as well as in Europe. And our ability in North America to ship to Europe to fulfill some of their requirements for you know, sustainably support sourced lithium is, is also quite spectacular. Talk about the metallurgy. I think that uh, you have some samples Correct. there. Yeah. yeah. So this is our goodie jar. This is yeah. a, a nice, clean spodumen concentrate. I like dragging it around with me because people sometimes lose touch with what, what you're going to make. And that's really what, what pays the bills. And, and we've been very fortunate. Our property, the Corvette property, and certainly CV5 is demonstrating massive spodumene crystals that are in cross section this size and, and meters long. And what that means within the pegmatite there obviously is the depositional environment or the or the environment for the crystals to cure at a nice slow rate and grow such that they're this scale but that means the impurities are very minimal they're massive so we don't have a lot of dilution with the country rock that is in the pegmatite so we can basically with a simple dms circuit we're able to produce a well this is a 5.8 percent con it's done with dms low capex low opex a very inert tail as a result so some really favorable metallurgical results from our, and we've now demonstrated not only on a couple drill holes, the whole CV5 corridor that we drilled out last year has proven up to meet the same same clear and simple metallurgical process. So that it's amazing really to be that fortunate. Blair, uh, thanks for making the time. Thanks for having me. My name's Michael McRae with Kitco Mining here at the BMO Mining Conference. Kitco Mining special coverage of the Bank of Montreal's 32nd Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference is brought to you by First Majestic Silver.